tough manual labor under the bright, hot sun. Workers sort through the stones with their bare hands with the hope of finding that precious smooth stone, ounce by ounce, more valuable than gold. This morning the miners are successful. Here it is, a little piece of jade rock. But the days of scratching out a living from this quarry are numbered. The gray waters of the Yurinkash River once washed jade pebbles from the mountains downstream. But the riverbed has been stripped clean of jade, and the government has started to ban mining in some areas. There is a reason for the government ban on jade mining along this river. The environmental damage on these banks has been awful. All you can see are mounds of rocks and massive amounts of earth. But in Khotan, jade is the only commodity. At the market, traders examine the pebbles the same way a diamond, appraising them based on their clarity and color. The stone has brought a lot of wealth to the region. Ten years ago, something like this would cost $10 or $20. The prices are so high now. If we can't dig for jade, I don't know what we'd do. There'd be nothing to do. The mining ban extends just along the river, so the men go dig deeper into the mountains to find their jade. But even those deposits will run out one day. With a limited supply, the prices keep climbing. This piece is on sale for 95,000 U.S. dollars. Buy it soon, the sellers warn us, because it's going to be more expensive tomorrow. Compare this to putting $10,000 into the bank. If you buy a $10,000 piece of jade, your return is higher, possibly double or triple in a year or two. So why would someone put their money in the bank or in the unstable stock market? They'll go for jade. Jade is a Chinese treasure. Back out amongst the boulders, the diggers are ethnic Uyghurs who have not traditionally valued the stone, but it has become their livelihood. And so, day after long day, they dig. Melissa Chen, Al Jazeera, Hotan in Western China.